How you doing, Will? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Greetings. Yeah. Okay, great. Good, good. I was just logging in and, and actually um, the meeting is being recorded and we are live on YouTube. Very good.
Hi, Doris. Okay. Oh, okay, I've got it. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye. How was your trip, Marianne? My trip was good. Seems like a long time ago now. Yeah, I bet it does. <laughs> Come back into the whirlwind of uh, Sag Harbor. New York City, it feels like, doesn't it? Yes, feels like New York City. Yeah, it does. So um, I think that we're probably going to have you be a voting member tonight, Kate. I think we have um, at least one person. But let's um, let's wait and see. Okay. Well, sometime I'd like to talk about it because I don't feel I'm I'm contributing very much. So, no, you're good. When you make a comment, it's got substance. It's on point. You're thinking about it. You're adding a different perspective. And I was also wondering about all this paperwork we have to get. I mean, this month was nothing. But if if I was wondering how we could figure out a solution to all, you know, the packets and it seems to be so redundant because we get it on the, on the, I won't say any more, but you know, we get it on the, on the zoom business, we get everything. So I, I, I mean, I'm. Well, that's true. Um, when we were meeting in person, yeah. um, we would pick up those packets and um, be able to study them and, visit right. the various locations ahead of time. Um, some of the applications that were thornier and went through various revisions, we would end up having inches and inches of paper. Oh. You're totally right. Oh, I, I was appalled. I, I really threw out a lot of stuff. I just had to. Right, you recycled it, right? Of course. Um, I don't have an answer. Okay. I think now, I think it's really helpful to have it on Zoom. Although I do like having a hard copy, at least of the survey. So when you go and walk this site, you have an idea of what's going on. Right. Um, you know, if you feel like you could contribute something there and you want to look at how to whittle that down. Okay. That would be um, helpful. Well, I can certainly understand the surveys, uh, you know, that kind of thing, but yeah, the okay. redundancy is getting, yeah. But it's not this week, it's not this month. So I'm not gonna worry okay. about it. So um, it's five after two. Um, I think we should go ahead and say the Pledge of Allegiance. So, I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America and to the Republic, the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation God, under God, God and in indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice. justice. Wow. So, um, welcome to the June 3rd meeting of the Harbor Committee, Sag Harbor Village. Um, we have present here, we have um, Herb Sambal, we have Mary Ann Eddy, we have John Parker, we have Kate Plum, and I'm sure I saw Will Sharp there, yes. And of course we have Fred Field as well. Um, so Lily Fell called me this afternoon and she had an unavoidable conflict so I doubt that she's going to show up. Um, okay. But can, can you, I'm sorry. Can you guys, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Can oh. now. All right. Good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Did you say something before that we needed to uh, repeat? I, I, I was, I was, I was saying, I was talking, but I didn't get any response. So I've, it's, um, but you hear me now. <laughs> yeah. You were all garbled there for a while, Doris, but you're crystal uh, clear now. Okay, perfect. Okay. 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 Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Marianne. All right. Um, so um, minutes. Um, Doris, did we get a copy of the minutes? Um, um, 
I was not able to edit them and I do apologize for that. Um, but so thank you, John, for um, sending over the uh, revisions, but I was I didn't get a chance to um, insert the changes. So um, you can table it to the next meeting. I will have those for tomorrow and, and ahead of time, the two okay. sets. OK. Um also, John reminded me that I had wanted to make a couple of revisions to the discussion portion of the April minutes. Yes. And um, I sent you an email, which you weren't able to respond to. If you could send those to me so I could. Um, yes. Can you send them to me in a workable format so that I can um, doctor them a little bit and send them around for um, approval? OK, I'll try my best to do that. And um, yes, definitely, you'll send them over. OK. All right, so um, can I have a motion to table? Can we put a table these in the same motion, Doris? Yes, correct. That's okay. fine. Um, may I have a motion to table the um, both the April and the May minutes of the Harbor Committee? A I'll motion. make that motion. I'll Thank second. You. Thank you. So did you get that, Doris? Yes, I did. Okay, great. Thank um, you. And for the record, the next meeting is July 1st. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so, are there any uh, comments from the public? Anything? Okay. Let me check the. the um, I don't see. I don't and see any there? raised hands, but maybe you see any on the other end. I don't see. Them. Um. Yes. Well, Herb Samble's got his hand up. Herb, do you have a comment? Herb? You're not exactly a member of the public, but um, please tell us what's on your mind. No, I do, I do not have my hand up. I think I was having a hard time getting on earlier, so just okay. ignore me. <laughs> All right. As you normally do, so fine. <laughs> not true. All right, then I think we can move into the um, body of the um, agenda. Correct. Um, so the first thing we have is decisions now, um, both our consultant and his usual backup, um, Eileen Keenan are on vacation. So we have the trustee Fred Thiel, who's gonna give us highlights of these decisions. <laughs> um, Fred, are you ready? I am ready. And wow. uh, yeah, Chick and Eileen are there and, and it's it's come down to me. So- it's come uh, down to you. <laughs> Uh, these Thank you three, for uh, so at our last meeting, at our May meeting, we had authorized uh, Chick to prepare uh, decisions on three uh, three applications, and we have three separate decisions. I'm going to take them in the order in which they are on the uh, agenda. And the first one, right. uh, and Fred? I know Chick, had, Chick has forwarded those decisions to uh, all of you by email, so all hopefully right, you, right. you all have them. Yes. Fred, do you, would you like me to share them or your- If you your... could share, yeah, the first one, uh, as you know, Doris, okay. is 68 West Water. So if you'd like to share okay. that, that would be great if you could do that. Sure, okay. Give me just a second and- Hmm. Let me know when you see it, please. Okay, it says you're starting. Okay, we have we that's 14 Cove. 14 Cove. We need, we need 68 West West. Okay. Okay, that's it. So uh, I'll give you kind of the broad overview of, of the application and what's in the uh, what's in the in the proposed permit. The applicant is Sag Harbor Villas Homeowners Association Inc. 
And uh, as was stated, the property is at 68 West Water Street. And this is a, a fairly straightforward application. The pro proposed project was specifically to remove approximately 14,600 square feet of Phragmites at the location there at the villas. Um, and uh, we were submitted with a Phragmites removal plan, which you remember we reviewed at the last meeting. Phragmites to be cut three times a year. And um, the, uh, the proposed permit includes the findings that are necessary for us to, uh, to approve this application. And uh, uh, Chick has provided all of the findings that this will uh, not have an adverse impact on the wetlands um, and also provides for conditions of approval uh, all of the works certainly to conform to the plans. Any further modification requires authorization of the Harbor Committee. Uh, you know, outlines the the work that has to be done with uh, um, Phragmites removal uh, and a number of conditions as to how that work is going to be done. There's also a mention of uh, the Diamondback Terrapin could be present in the area year round and what needs to be done and notifications that need to be done to, to minimize any impacts. And uh, then, you know, the usual conditions that we provide, you know, to secure the work area to make sure the work is done properly. So uh, again, a pretty straightforward, uh, it's a Phragmites removal and, uh, you know, the, the, the conditions are outlined there for you to see. Okay. Um, is there any uh, questions for Fred? Um, may I have a motion to approve this uh, decision as written? I move. Thank you, Herb. Anybody want a second? A second. Thank you, Will. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Um, and the next one, Fred, on the agenda is 14 Cove Road. 14 Cove Road, LLC, uh, William Burns. Again, 14 Cove Road is the location. Uh, the project description is, um, well, uh, I, can, I, can, I can wait until Doris gets the permit up before I go ahead. Okay. Just in case for those that uh, wanna follow there. Okay, as I stated, um, 14 Cove Road, LLC, William Burns at the, the, the same location, 14 Cove Road. This project was to remove an existing one-story residence decking driveway and walkways and to construct a 3,029 square foot five bedroom single family dwelling with a porch, uh, with a driveway, uh, a terrace and a swimming pool and a fence. Um, it does provide for an IA system uh, I think noteworthy in the findings here is that the proposed structures, is, as you know, uh, there was already uh, a house on the site which is being removed. The proposed structures do not meet the setbacks, but the applicant has demonstrated uh, consideration of alternatives as required under Chapter 285 and, and that the proposed new dwelling will be situated as far west of the wetlands as possible. Several mitigation, mitigation measures are proposed. Uh, increased resident setback over what was pr previously there, um, and as well as an IA system uh, and the system located farther from the wetlands than the existing system, a drainage system comprised of five dry wells, a pervious driveway, and a non-disturbance, non-fertilized buffer, which does meet the code, by the way, the 50-foot requirement. So uh, noteworthy there, but, uh, you know, uh, Alternatives were looked at, and this was found to be the, the uh, by the majority of the board, was found to be the best of the alternatives. It is uh, like the previous application, it's a type two under CEQRA. Um, and um, we provide, as you can see later on, conditions of approval. Uh, and uh, again, they are the usual conditions of approval that we have, and there'll be uh, you know covenants and restrictions with regard to the non-fertilized buffer area um, and 
that is basically the outline there. So you know, I think the things that are, you know, it is a, was, was a disturbed site with buildings and structures that are being replaced. The wetland setbacks are greater than what was there before. And we, we're getting an IA system as part of this application. And, and uh, the uh, permit would, would, would be approved uh, as, as uh, Chick was directed to do. And uh, pardon me if I'm wrong, but I believe there was an existing um, application that was approved uh, a year or two or three ago and that this application is not in any way more adventurous than the previous application that was approved? I think that is correct. Let me just see if there's any mention of that in the permit itself. Is that, that was the table that Brian provided last time, I believe, where he showed that all the setbacks for the new house were essentially the same, and in some cases slightly improved over the previous approval. Right. I don't see any mention of a prior approval here. My notes definitely show that there was a prior approval and we asked for a comparison yeah. okay. between the two. Not in the permit, but you know, th th there are findings here that this uh, um, mitigates what was there before. Right. So I think we have an adequate paper trail to show that we are just um, papering over something that had already um, sort of establish some of these boundaries um, that we're approving now. Um, well, I mean, I'd, I'd like it to, to if, if possible, I mean, I'd, I'd like it to say that, uh, that this proposal is um, better in terms of setbacks uh, and buffers than the previous proposal that we had approved. Because I thought that was the, the basis by that we didn't have any question about it. Well, I remember that with 12 Green Street. I don't remember that here, but there's no. no reference to that in the application. 12 Green Street, there was no prior approval. This, it was this one we were talking right. about. Yeah. Right. Was, and I don't know, is that appropriate to you, put that in the, uh, um, or is that just documented in our discussion that there was a prior application that was approved? Is it appropriate to put that in the-, the Well, I don't have the information to put it in here. All I have is what, what Chick provided, which was the, the way that this proposed project meets the standards, and that um, okay, you know, again, so I'll read what I think is the applicable section here. Which, right. while That's the right. proposed structures do not meet the village chapter two eighty five setbacks, the applicant demonstrates consideration of alternatives as required under chapter two eighty five, and indicated that the proposed new dwelling will be situated as far west of the wetlands as possible. Several mitigative measures are proposed, including increased resident setback, an innovative alternative on-site wastewater treatment system located farther from the wetlands than the existing system, a drainage system comprised of five dry wells, a pervious driveway, a non-disturbance, non-fertilized buffer area. So Fred, is it appropriate, um, as John suggested, that we um, approve this subject to the addition of language that says that um, this application echoes a previously approved application? Yeah, I just don't have anything here that, that, that relates to that. No, 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 no. What I'm asking you is whether or not we could vote to um, approve this with subject to the addition of that language. Except okay. I don't know what that language is. Let me, let me propose language then, Fred. Can I, can I make a, can I propose the language that be inserted? Sure. This would be under A, um, where it says, while proposed structures do not meet Village of Static Harbor Chapter 285 setback requirements. Uh, and that the applicant demonstrates considerable alternatives required on the wetlands as possible. I would just add a phrase saying uh, that uh, uh, the setbacks are at least equal to or greater than uh, those uh, approved in a previous application. I, I don't know. That's fine. I, I don't have any issue with that. Okay. It would be nice, though, I think in the final, we could firm up the, the specifics of that, though. So um, what can we do to let this um, application 
let these people um, move forward. Can we um, approve it subject to, or do we have to hold it over for formal approval on the July? Let, let, let's not hold up the applicant. Let's approve it subject to, and we'll, we will, we'll make some the modifications as appropriate. Right. Cause I don't think it has any actionable kind of consequences. I agree. Right. Thank you. So, um, this when it didn't meet the setbacks, you know, we, we can show that hey, it's an improvement over what was previously approved, right? And on one of these surveys, from and you know, it goes back to 2017 or something, October. One of these surveys in this packet from right, this is the Redwood property, right? And no, it's Red Road, Road. Okay. yeah, yeah, it goes, but it's know, in the Redwood district, yes, yes. Right. So may I have a motion to um, approve this application subject to the addition of that language um, as just expressed um, in essence, just saying that this um, is equal to or better than um, the application that was previously approved? Uh, yes, I'll move. Yes. Okay, um, so John uh, made the motion and Kate second, all in favor, aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Um, and Fred, you're up one more time. Uh, yep, the, the last uh, decision, the last approval tonight is for uh, uh, BNS Courtyard LLC, 14 Vitali Silly Avenue. Right. And uh, I'll wait for Doris to put it up. Okay. okay, and there it is. And uh, this proposed project includes the construction of a two-story single-family dwelling, the construction of a dock, um, the installation of an IHA on-site wastewater treatment system, a saltwater swimming pool, a 50-foot non-disturbance, non-fertilized buffer, and 25-foot non-fertilized area. There is a footpath through the non-disturbance area and a drainage system designed for two and a half rain, uh, inch rainfall. Uh, parking area, raised uh, grades to accommodate drainage system, uh, retaining walls and 61,400 cubic yards of fill. Um, in the findings, this is an application that meets all of the wetland setbacks or it meets all of the code requirements with regard to uh, uh, setbacks, buildings, septic, uh, buffers, all of those are met. As I said, uh, an ICE A system is provided. Um, the requisite findings under the code have, have been made uh, by, by Chick in the, in the permit. Secret type two action. Uh, so uh, it is, uh, there is no further secret action that is necessary. Same with waterfront consistency. And then if you go to the middle of page three, there are the conditions of approval. And there are the usual things as far as, you know, with silt fence and, you know, construction debris being gathered and, you know, all of our usual uh, construction conditions that Chick puts in the permit. So um it as i said you know uh new construction but it, it require it meets all the required setbacks for uh, in all regards okay any questions for fred okay may i have a motion to accept this application as written by chick Voorhees? hello May I'll I make a, I'll make that motion. Thank you, Will. Second, please. I second. Thank you, Herb. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, so the next item here, we're moving into old business. Um, continued public hearing. Um, 18 Puff Bluff Road. Doris, do I have this correct that the applicant has asked us to table this until July? Doris, is this the, uh, an application that there's been a request to table this? 
Doris. <laughs> I think Doris, Doris may be having her audio problems again. Yeah. Yeah, I'm having a few too, so. Can you hear uh, me now? Yes. Goodness, I don't know what's going on. Okay, um, it's the one that the application that requests to adjourn until the next meeting is uh, Clark, Clarkson House, number eight, John Street. Oh. Well, we're right now we're on 18 Bluff Point Road. I thought when we talked earlier, you said that that one had been requested to be tabled as well. Okay, let me just confirm then. Hold on, please. Okay. Uh, this is Haley Willits for the applicant on 18 Bluff. I don't, I don't believe anyone from my office made that request to Correct. Pull we're prepared to present today. Thank you, Haley. Um, I, we do have a, a memo, um, Marianne from Chick on that one. Okay. Do you like me to share that or have um, sure. Haley present? Well, Haley, if she'd like to talk to us, have her talk to us, introduce yourself, please. Haley Willis from the Adam Miller Group on behalf of the applicant, 2462 Main Street, Bridgehampton. Um, Doris, you, Haley. I may share my screen. Of course, let me, um, let me get that for you. Give me one minute. Okay, you're ready. Okay, are you looking at my landscape plan? Right. Yes. Okay, great. So this here was the formerly proposed plan. Um, comments from the last meeting were uh, largely focused on the inadequacy of the proposed plantings. So we took those comments to heart and in the new plans here, we are proposing a significantly increased native planting area. Um, the, there's an additional roughly 2,000 square feet of plantings. What was previously proposed was 5,573 square feet, and now we're at 7,632 square feet um, increased along this edge um, around the swimming pool and back here as well. So Doris, did we receive a memo from Chick um, with comments on this? Yes. Um, uh, I don't know if I got that. Um, is that something that Fred, Fred, do you have that, that you could brief us on Chick's interpretation of this uh, revision? I, I do not have that handy. I have it, I can share it if you would like. I don't know if Haley is, um... Uh, Haley, are, is this the only presentation? Is, is that, or do you have more? This is the only um, drawing that I have. I don't have the survey because the landscape plan wasn't completed in time for us to have that revised. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Haley. Thanks. So, I'm Marianne, do you want me to share that um, memo? Um, yes. Okay. It, it was um, emailed, circulated. Uh, Chip sent it over to to all of us and I'm going to share that. Give me one second. Right, but it was quite late. I mean, usually we want things in by Friday before the meeting, correct? That is correct. The chick said it chick said it this afternoon. Right. Oh, that's so, <laughs> so um Fred, can you take a look at it and um tell us what your um impression is? Is is Haley still there? Haley? Hey. Can you just stop sharing um um your screen? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let me get that uh, memo. And oh yes, I'm, I did. I got mine at one forty-five this afternoon from Chick. So would you? How long is it, Herb? Um, it is um, just two pages. Just trying to see what it. It's specifically about eighteen bluff. Uh, if I recall it, he basically has no objections. Well, um, we had asked them to make some changes and I'm just wondering well, whether or not in his estimation they met. The well, that looks like it there on the screen. So there you go. Right. If, if, so if Fred, I can, let me, let me just summarize a, a sentence from, from Chick's letter. 
Okay. It, it appears as though the applicant's last submission is responsive to the requested information from the April 1st meeting. Yeah. And he also thanks Fred for summarizing this for the committee. <laughs> I, I just am seeing it, but that's okay. Yeah. I, I, I knew I had to do the decisions, but, uh, okay. and I'm still looking for this. Um, isn't this the property that was in, um, it was in violation of the decking or some part of it that the neighbor complained about? Yes, I believe so. There was a there was a decking installed by the previous owner, I believe. Previous owner, that's yeah. What, that's what Chick is saying. No, the deck was yeah, the deck was installed without uh, the proper approvals, uh, bad advice from a contractor. So that's why we're here um, retroactively. And we're taking advantage of that to get you to put a lot more plantings in, which we're happy to do. Right. So um, Fred, can you scan that and uh, confirm what John um, Parker said that um, Chick um, is um, satisfied? Well, I'm, I'm still looking for the memo. Can you read it on the screen? Okay. I've got well, I've got in front of me here is the project location. So would it, would it come in again at like 1:44 this afternoon? 1:45 this afternoon? You're copying. Yeah, you want to scroll through it because I don't have it. Okay. Um, so I can read it out loud, or would you want to read it on the screen? Well, that's fine, Marianne. If you if you've got it in front of you. Um, so um, I can read it. Okay. Um, so this is to Doris. It's from Chick Voorhees, 18 Bluff Road. Um, introduction. The applicant, John McGuire, has um, okay, submitted a wetlands permit application for 675 plus square feet of previously installed decking and to install two dry wells and establish a 5,579 square foot reveg buffer on developed residential property located at 18 Bluff Road on Upper Sag Harbor Cove in the incorporated village of Sag Harbor. Nelson Pope Voorhees on behalf of the Harbor Committee has reviewed the application site plan and other materials submitted with the application for overall content and completeness, as well as to provide preliminary technical comments. Based on this review, the application was found to be sufficiently complete for a hearing which occurred on the April 1st meeting. The applicant was requested to consider expansion of the natural buffer on the property, a revised plan dated May 25th was received and is pending review before the Harbor Committee on the June 3rd meeting. Background, a review memo was last issued for this project on February 17th, 21, in which bluff setbacks were requested. A survey last revised February 26th of 21 was received March 1st, 21. The survey now reflects the bluff crest and the 50 foot bluff setback line. A hearing on the application was conducted on April 1st, 2021, during which the need to address trees between the pool and the road and additional revegetation was noted. On May 6th, the hearing was adjourned until the June 3rd Harbor Committee meeting. A revised landscape plan was received on May 25th in response to comments from the Harbor Committee. Uh, project location and description. I don't know that we need to read that. Do we need to read that? Yeah, Marianne, I, I have located it, so I do have it in front of me now. And, okay. you know, I think the, you, you know, as, as was stated, you know, this is a, you know, to legalize a deck that was put in by a prior owner. And then they were, you know, installing, as you said, the two dry wells and, uh, and, and put, to put the buffer on site. I think if you go to, you know, his on page two, his preliminary comments, um, you know, I think he basically outlines the application, but I think uh, probably operative here is, is condition two or paragraph two. You know, Nelson Pope Voorhees has no further comments at this time. The applicant has provided additional native landscaping based on the landscape plan. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it appears that what, Chick had brought up at the last meeting has been addressed with the submission 
uh, from what I can tell from the memo here. So okay. there, don't, there don't appear to be any outstanding items as I go through Chick's memo. Okay. Okay. One thing that I would like to address, just this is the first time I'm seeing this as well, um, and our revised plan here does not include a proposed IA system. Um, I know from the last meeting that that was something that, that the committee you know, al always likes to see, um, and we would like nothing more than to be able to do that. Um, given the layout and the size of the property, likely the only possible location for the IA system would be underneath the driveway. So it would be a substantial project um, and incredibly disruptive and destructive. It would probably involve ripping up the lawn. It may not even be possible to install it without a variance for setbacks. Um, and while the applicant is more than happy to do this revegetation. Um, installing an IA system at this time is not going to be possible from a financial perspective. Um, so he has offered this plan and is is on board to do this revegetation, but um, the IA system would not be part of the proposal. Well. My sympathy is moderated by the fact that I'm in the same situation and I'm probably going to put an IA system in underneath my driveway. And I don't think that's going to be involving ripping up the whole yard because I have these two massive trees that um, I need to avoid. Um, and their root base. Um, Sorry. Did we? Could, does could anybody I, remember our discussing this before? Yes. I'm, a little, I'm a little confused by, by the, the, the memo here, and I'm not sure whether that it says the property address is 59 John Street. Where do you see that, John? Project location and description. The property is located on the south side of John Street. The property address is 59 John Street. The proposed that, project specifically involves construction of a two-story residence. Oh, yeah, you're right. Property. Is, um, correct. That is not the memo that I have in front of me. Yeah. Okay. Are you sure? Because well, it's it, well, it starts out or? as being it starts out as being 18 bluff and then midway through. I think there was a, uh, 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 what is it, a cut and paste situation here. Right. Because the introduction refers to the Bluff Point application, but yeah. in the background, it starts to refer to John Street, or at least under project keep, location. Keep going. Keep going. I want to see where that happens. Under project uh, location. On, on yeah, the project I see that. Yep, now I see that. There's a problem with that. <laughs> cut and paste. And, and this this isn't construction of a two story residence, correct? It isn't. No. No. Okay, because with construction of a two story residence, the IA system would be required. Yes. But that is not this. This is a deck. Which was um, it's too big. It's too big for the lot. Uh, the deck. No. Even now, right? It's too far away. It's too close. It's just within the Harbor Committee jurisdiction, so it would have required approval to be built uh, in the first place. Well, your point, Kate, is that it's too close to what? To the wetlands, to the property line? Yeah, I mean, it, well, I guess it was it just a matter that it was never um, approved. It was never, there was never any um, building permit permitted for the deck. So I don't actually have that you know, in front of me, but I, I, I thought that ever all, if, if they're only putting trees or I guess, I thought this body, this house has on two sides has water. It's water on two sides, right? Right. Um, I, so I, I don't see why, how we can not have an IA system here. I don't get that, not request that. I, I have to agree with Kate on that. I mean, I don't know what we've come across this many times, whether or not we have the legal right to condition a minor 
uh, application as Chick describes this one, we can condition it on, on the uh, structure of an IA system, but everything that we've looked at as a Harbor Committee, all the water quality analysis that we've done is that is the single biggest contributor to the poor water quality in the cove is, you know, existing septic systems. And this one is sitting right on the edge of um, the cove. Two bodies of water. I mean, it's the corner yeah. piece. Um, I think we have, um, Fred, what is, what is your take on this? Yeah, here, here's, you know, I think with the statute, it, it basically, you know, after, uh, you know, there was the grandfather provision and then it had to be new construction or a substantial modification. And I do remember one application we had where there was a minor modification where there was really, I guess a couple of things to say here. One is what we're approving here is, or would be giving a permit for is a deck, which basically, you know, doesn't really change anything on site relating. It's not a substantial modification, nor is there any relationship between what we were being asked to approve and, and septic waste either. So, um, I think, you know, it, I'm not sure it, 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 it triggers, it's not one of the things that would trigger our being able to, you know, the statute requiring an IA system. Uh, and I'm not sure we can argue that there's a relationship between the deck and asking for an IA system. Conditions have to be uh, rationally related to the project that's being put in here and it's a deck. But, you know, that being said, I mean, you know, it isn't, you know, just to address what the applicant's representative said, it's not just that it's within our uh, jurisdiction. This doesn't meet the setback requirements either for, for structures. It's, it's um, according to Chick, it's within 20 feet of the bulkhead and wetlands. The deck is? Yeah. May I ask the applicant a question? Of course. This is her. Uh, so when you say that you found that the cost was going to be prohibitive, uh, does that take into account some of the refunds and rebates that are out there uh, yeah. for people putting in these systems? It does. So you're talking about what, like landscaping and, you know, the restoring? Yeah, that, we have to abandon the old system. Um, it would involve installing it prop probably under the driveway, um, in which case there's covenants will be filed. There's legal work associated with that. Um, the entire project is just going to yeah. be uh, out, of, out of the applicant's yeah. budget right now. Well, yeah. you know, I would kind of, because I'm halfway down that slope myself, um, I've been assured that Suffolk County, because they're very interested in having IA systems in, give those variances readily. And so, oh, sure, sure. I, the variance. I don't think I don't it's think like it's a legal system. battle to get them to say yes. <laughs> no, not a battle. Just uh, the work involved with filing the covenant. And well, what we have here is a little bit of a horse trading, and I think we are asking that in our giving the deck a green light, there's a response by the applicant, and certainly there's money involved. But above and beyond the money, there's an environment. Now, this is a substantial piece of real estate. And I guess that from what Fred says, we maybe don't have a legal uh, plank here, but we, we can discuss horse trading. I don't think that's illegal. Especially with a deck that's 20 feet from the wetlands. Yeah. And it's supposed to be 75 feet. So, and coming back after the fact, um, I mean, this would never be, we would never permit this. <laughs> I can't imagine ever permitting this if we were sitting here now and that deck weren't there. Um, so you're right, Will. I think that we have a little bit of horse trading here. Where does the existing septic system uh, uh, on the property, how does that relate to the wetlands line? Does the applicant have any sense of that? Is there a survey of existing survey conditions out there? I don't have a survey with the revised plan. Um, it is located near the deck. It's it's under the old deck. Um, 
So it would involve, you know, abandoning the system under, the, under the deck. I would just want to, I would like to point out that the entire property is within the 75 foot setback. So all work yeah. done here is sensitive. And I will say that the owner is a fisherman. Um, protecting the waterfront is of utmost importance to him. And he has shown great willingness to revegetate. He's excited about this project. He's um, more than happy to do it and appreciates the environmental sensitivity of the lot. But he's faced with a scenario now through no fault of his own, um, you know, through just mistakes and bad advice. Well, um, he's yeah, in a, it's a pretty big mistake to build a deck without a permit. Understood. And he was, he was misled in that, in that work. Um, and he wants to, you know, like you say, make this trade that he is going to revegetate the property and is more than happy to do so. But there's a limit to what he's able to spend right now to undergo this project. And the IA system is going to make it impossible for him. And he'll essentially be left with no choice but to... You know, you know it'd be nice is to see you make a study of what an IA system would in fact cost, because you said something that's a little disconcerting, which is that the existing septic is- Under the uh, deck. Yeah, it's somewhere closer to the water than a resolution, which would be in the driveway. Granted, th these things are, are related to money, but th that, that th let's put that in the horse trade and see if you could do, I would ask that you, um, do a little research and see what that might take. Uh, to, an ab to abandon a existing system is not the end all. And well, we, we have you know, looked into what the cost is going to be and the applicant has determined that it's not gonna be a project that he's able to take on at this time. And well, if I could I finish my thought from before, I was going to say that he would be, he would be left with the option of installing an ISA system that he cannot afford and he, he cannot go down that path or you know, withdrawing this application, removing the deck and not doing any revegetation. Well, I and think that's-, that's nobody's, a, that's not- I, a I'm sorry, but I think that's a little disingenuous because there's actually like um, loan programs to help support people that are in similar situations. And I think, um, I think that that Herb, I'm sorry if it was Will, but somebody brought up, I think, a really good point. It's like, where is the present um, uh, uh, you know, septic system right now? Is it like 20 feet um, from the wetlands? So um, Haley, I think we do need to see a survey um, with the cesspool septic system that exists now and with the vegetation appropriately plotted in there. And Will, I think you're right. I think we need to see exactly. Um, I know that it costs more to- oh, no, no. Um, There we go. Okay. It costs more to put um, uh, a septic system underneath a driveway, but I'm not sure that those costs can't be covered. The last I saw is that um, costs could be covered up to $40,000. I believe yeah. the county is, is out of funds for these kinds of grants. That's what I- uh, No, I think they just got- um, Yeah, that was during, that was last year they were in, right. a, in limbo. And they, yes, they restricted some of the funds because they needed it to keep like police and firefighters and stuff on board. But I don't think that's the case anymore. So um, I think I know it's not the case anymore. Okay, <laughs> there we go. Facts certain. I think it's important to to note that there is a real possibility yeah. that this results in withdrawing the application, and then the property does not get revegetated to any extent. Um, and that's not an outcome that that we want. It's not an outcome I don't think that the village wants. Um, but it may be the reality if we're forced to go down this path. And just to engage an engineer to design the septic is, is an out-of-pocket cost that to even figure out uh, what the future, what the actual costs would be, you have to incur expenses just to have it designed and laid out. So um, 
at least with the proposed plan, there is natural vegetation being added back onto the property, maintained by Summerhill, um, and really taking into consideration the environmental sensitivity. So it's it's better than what's existing. Um, if it weren't and it might be all that we're able to do. Um, can you show us where the current septic is on this, this on this um, survey, please? Marianne, can you hear yeah. me? Okay, so yeah. I just I found this survey on um, my emails, and it's one of the, the latest um, survey. Haley, yeah. you want me to enlarge it? Thank you. So I am not sorry. I'm trying to read it. Thank you. Can you flip it? Yes. Thank uh, you. Is that better? Right by the the dry well by the pool. You see what I'm talking about? Well, that's a dry well. It's right near that. It's located next to that. Is CP? Yeah, I think that's cesspool. Where is do that you what see that? CP is? It's essentially leaching into the uh, wetlands there. Where do you see it? I'm not even seeing CP. Right above the gas line, it says CP. I don't know if that's cesspool or. Yes, uh, that is what that means. Yeah. Oh. So that's on this, if, if I'm seeing, that's on the street side of, of the project. So it might not be as complex as the applicant thinks. You've got a water line. Um, what, what's the budget for the landscaping? I'm not sure what he's being well, quoted. I mean, and I don't think that's the locate. I think that the septic is located down by the pool. I don't know what CP does seem logical that it would be cesspool, but it was my understanding that it was located uh, where this deck area is. So Haley, um, yeah. I, I don't think we're gonna resolve this um, to anybody's satisfaction tonight. I think we need to understand where the current um, septic is. I think we need the um, survey that um, is gonna show the proposed landscaping. And I think we need to have you submit, I, I, I just can't believe that this is so um, far out of anybody's financial wherewithal to be able to um, put in an IA system. I, I have a lot of resistance in accepting that. Well, short of showing you financial statements, I'm not sure how you, you know, how we can, uh, other than, you know, me telling you what's been reported by our client that this is not a project that he can take on. Uh, maybe he really know how I can. Maybe he hasn't been well informed. Maybe he doesn't know what's available. I mean, I think you were saying that the fund was exhausted from Suffolk County and that's not current information. So um, maybe there's more information for him to um, become aware of. You know what else? Um, it might be very helpful to speak to one of the engineers that are working on these systems. Um, I pick up the phone and talk to engineers all the time and they're glad to help out. Uh, obviously they're not gonna design a system but they can look at a survey like this and give you a pretty good idea um, of whether it's a Chevrolet or a BMW kind of project. And what we would, I think, I don't want to speak for the entire committee, but we would be glad to kind of help you resolve um, the septic options, let's say. So if you gave us a survey that in fact located where the uh, existing cesspool or septic is, let's let's work with it. Let's, let's see what we can do so we can we can come to resolution on this and, and we're not trying to spend your client's money that he doesn't have, but there might be a way of directing your client to resolution with, that if he is concerned about the environment, which he obviously is, we can, we can, um, we can do a good horse trade or fish trade. Right. Uh, Kaylee, it, and it's a, an extreme example. I mean, anything that goes into that cesspool 
is virtually in Sag Harbor Cove within a year. That's right. And, you know, so it's pretty critical. It's not like something like, you know, where I live up the hill and I'm like half a mile away from the water. This is sitting right on the water. Yes, but if the board, if the committee is going to require something that our client cannot pay for, the result is going to be withdrawing this application. The septic well, is going to stay the way that it is. I think, I think that what you want to do is step back from that statement and take advantage of what Will Sharp has offered, which is to work collaboratively and see whether or not we can't make that less of a black and white decision. Well, we can certainly come back with the uh, revised survey showing the revised planting plan and, and marking out the uh, location of the existing septic. That's, that's no problem. We'd be glad to do that. Okay. I've got a couple of questions, if I could. Uh, Haley, uh, this deck was put in without, without a permit. Was, was the pool also put in without a permit? No, just the deck. So this is an expense because the, I mean, the, the deck isn't very, uh, doesn't extend very far from the, from the pool. Um, so I was wondering how far this deck extends farther than the original deck. The deck is not, the deck in question is not the one surrounding the pool. It's the one uh, to the waterfront side of the property. It's unrelated to the pool deck. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm the one that says balcony, or below, yeah, we're it's below deck. the balcony. Yes. The balcony's on the second floor, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so that that's where it says balcony. That's where the so the, the the pool and the wood deck there do have a do have a permit. Correct. All right. And do you happen to know when that pool was put in, Haley? I do not. I can find out. Okay. Okay, that that would be one question. This, this, was there a violation found? Is that why you're 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 here asking for a uh, for a permit? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I have so, a question. Sorry, go ahead, no. John. Yeah, more. I was going to have I, asked, I was going to have a question for for Fred. Basically, if if they were to withdraw the application, uh. I assume they would then be removing the deck that is in violation? Yeah, I mean, the, the purpose of the application is to correct the violation. So if you don't get the, if you don't get the structure approved, then you'd be required to remove it. I said the next part of my question is, would they then be required to do revegetation in the area where the structure is removed? I, you know, I, not necessarily, because they're all they have to do is remove the offending structure to not be in violation of the code. They don't have to do anything more. If, if I may, we spoke to the building inspector on this point, and and he said that a rebedge wouldn't be required if we if we rip up the deck. All right. So um, I look forward to seeing this survey. Um, and uh, having it pointed out to us where the current uh, sanitary system is. And um, Will, um, I think we'll all accept your offer to sort of see um, what the uh, financial impact of putting an IA system in here is. Is that offer good? All right, yeah. And, and I just wanna say that there are engineers and then there are engineers and some of them are very knowledgeable about septic uh, options uh, for the IA. Um, and Marianne has discovered that you can, in fact, put them in over a driveway. Some people say you can't do that, but that's not accurate. Um, so it looks like you have a pretty good driveway area there. Um, we want to work with you. We don't want to, that, that's why we're here. We want to work with you. Okay. Um, can I have a motion to table this until the July uh, 1st meeting, please? I move. Thank you. I second. Thank you, Will. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you Haley. Thank you, Haley. Um, all right. So the next and last agenda yes. item is uh, 8 John Street. Um, Doris. Yeah, Doris, were we saying that this was tabled or what's the status on this, Doris? 
there was some confusion. Is Doris back with us or? She's, she is. Is she speaking? Doris? She like you. <laughs> what? She can't speak. Um, <laughs> Eight John Street, Doris, you said that they called in or wrote in um, requesting a uh, postponement. postponement. Raise your right hand if that's accurate. <laughs> <laughs> there I, we go. Fred, you saw it. That's legal. I saw it. <laughs> but the record show. <laughs> right. So um, when I was talking with Doris about this earlier, um, it seemed, we closed the public hearing on this. Is that not correct? No, it's not that way in the agenda. It says it's a continuing public hearing. Right. Wow. Old business slash continued public hearing. I'm not sure that that means that all the old business is a continued public hearing. I think um, Doris and I um, confirmed that we had closed the public hearing. Um, how do we determine that? Doris, did we close the public hearing on this? Yes. <laughs> All right, so, and we were at the point of taking a vote, I believe, to deny this application and they asked us to table that. Is that correct, Doris? Yes. Yes. Um, so, Fred, what are the options here? I mean, they can't, once the public hearing is closed, they can't submit any more documentation, can they? No, the record's closed. The records closed. Yeah, and the time, I mean, we always have a time after the hearings closed to submit. That time has expired also. Okay. So um, I don't know what we can do here. I don't know that we can table something that's essential. Well, I mean, you could table making a decision on it, but the hearing's closed. Yeah. Okay. Is there anybody um, for the applicant and the audience here today? Yes, hi. I am I'm trying to figure out how to turn myself on. This is Taylor from Beeline. Hi. Mute. We can okay, hear you. Can, can you sure. see and hear me okay? Yes. Can you okay. introduce yourself and tell us your address? Yes, uh, this is Taylor Sturm from Beeline Associates for Claxton House LLC, which is H on Street. And um, at this point, you guys all remember the discussion we had last month, I'm sure. Um, the applicant hasn't had uh, sort of adequate time to go through some of the advice that the board had given us at the end of that meeting. So we were hoping to table at least your decision until next, until next month, if uh, possible. Right. Fred, I'm not sure. Um, I think based <clears throat> on what you have submitted so far, um, we were headed towards a denial. I'm not sure once the public hearing has been closed, we can't accept any more documentation. So Fred, what is, what is the path forward here? What are the various routes? Well, I, I, you know, I guess the- uh, Withdraw the application? Could we withdraw the application, could request that the hearing be reopened um, you could make a decision. Um, you know, I, I think the best course would be, you know, they had requested a month of German on the decision. I, I, I don't see any downside to, to that course of action. Um, and I don't know what the, uh, applicant's going to come up with for whether it, it's, it, you know, whether it's something the board might want to reopen the hearing for or not, I, I don't know, but I don't see any any downside to delaying a decision for a month. That's fine. But can, that's I agree with can I ask a, a, just a procedure? Can they, who, who can ask for the public hearing to be reopened? Well, only the board can decide to reopen a hearing. Um, but and you know it would then have to be renoticed by the applicant. You'd have you'd have to do all of that. Gotcha. It doesn't happen very often, um, mm -hmm. but I mean it is a process um, that, that could happen. I you know, 
again, you know, I, I, the, I think, you know, the applicants requested a, a month before the decision is going to be made. I, I, again, I don't see a downside to that. Okay, that's fine. So say, let's fast forward a month and we're all here. Um, what, what are we going to do next month? The applicant asks us to form. Well, I don't know what the applicant might submit, but um, well, what, what can we ask them to submit? We're not taking new documentation. Unless well, you're not asking them to submit anything because the record is right. closed, but they may want to submit something. And th then, you know, I, I, it would be pure, pure speculation what you might want to do if they, you know, the, the only option you'd have with this application would be to reopen the hearing. Uh, other than that, I, I, you know, but it, so I, you know, listen, I, I think that I, I, we, we all have a good sense of where the board is on this application and I'm not sure um, what might change about that. But uh, again, I, you know, I, I don't see a, an issue right. with it. So Fred, you know. so my, my question is, do we wait a month for them to come and formally ask <laughs> us to reopen the application or can they ask us to reopen the application during these coming weeks? I mean, if they do, and if they want to submit documentation, I mean, have- Well, they can submit something to the to the board from the interim, but you, you wouldn't be able to make a decision to reopen until the next meeting. Right. But even and, if they're not permitted to submit documentation, they'd still be permitted to address the board and uh, speak to the board and that sort of thing, the committee, I should say. Yeah, sure. I, and how does public notice come in there? Here, in this meeting. But um, and how would public notice work with that? I mean, we can't really. Uh, yeah, listen, if the, if if the applicant came back with something that you thought was worthwhile considering, um, you would basically. I, I mean, it would be the same as starting over as far as a notice requirement. We would have to put a new notice in the paper. Um, there would have to be um, signs posted. Posted all of that stuff. You, you literally would it, it would be, you know, Certainly. almost starting from scratch. But so, what I'm saying is, questioning is, is can we even review any new proposals that they have without having a notice of a public hearing? Only in the context of whether the initial decision is whether it's worthwhile to. Really, the only thing you could consider is is whether or not you would want to reopen the hearing. That, that that would be to that point. So if we made the decision, voted on the decision tonight, and then and one way or the other, then um, then they had the option to brand new anyway. It sounds like that's what's going to happen anyway. They yeah. could bring a brand new application. Um, they could challenge the the board's decision. You know, yeah. those are decisions for them to make. But the the um, Again, you know, they made a request for a, a month delay. The only thing you could do at the end of that month would be, you know, if there was evidence that would be, you would think would be significant enough to want to reopen the hearing, that's all. And we would discuss that at the next month meeting. Correct. And you wouldn't get to the merits of, of that other, it would just be, was there something that was presented that would require you, that would not require you, but would, Necessitate. Uh, make you cons want to consider reopening the hearing and then the public gets the opportunity to be heard. Uh, so you, you, you it would, that would, that's why I say that's the only issue you would, would determine would be, is there something that the applicant has brought to the board that would merit you wanting to reopen the hearing? Um, and, you know, I, I it, it's, Based on the history of this application, it's hard for me to imagine what that might be. But again, you know, as a courtesy, you might want to just give them the opportunity to do that. Or you could do what Kate said, which is basically the record's closed. You could make a decision. But, the, but Fred, that was a decision we made last last meeting to give them another month. They're now asking for 30 days more. It would seem yeah. to me that in the spirit of our initial agreement that, it, as you said, would do no harm to continue. Yeah, it, you know, it, it's your call, you know, but I mean, I, that, that's kind of the procedure of how that would work. I, I just wanted to explain that. Okay. Um, so that seems to be a, a logical and um, um, appropriate 
path forward. So may I ask for a motion to table this application until the July 1st uh, meeting? I move. Thank you. Second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Taylor. Um, can you hear me? This yes. Is You're yes. Back. Now we can. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what happens. I don't know what's going on. Um, so the next item, number five discussion item, is something that I wanted to discuss, which was snow removal options. And I actually put together a slide presentation for you all. Ooh. And then I lost it. Oh, the dog. <laughs> yeah, the dog, the dog ate the homework. my homework. The dog ate it. <laughs> all that anticipation and then... <laughs> right. Oh, I hate so it. little Leo here is like passed out from eating all that stuff. <laughs> Anyway, um, hardly something that we need to discuss, um, you know, but I, I do think that it's something we need to address. Now, um, I think it was on March 14th, I sent you all an email. It had a couple of pictures. It had a map of what I was proposing. I'm not proposing anything different. Um, if you don't have it, I can send you a copy of the village owned locations in um, where you might find something that's suitable that I didn't see. Um, I thought that maybe we could dump the snow over at the firehouse by the ambulance. And I was told, no, that was not an option. So um, anyway. Um, why, why was that not an option, Marianne? Just out of curiosity. Well, I was just told that there's, you know, too much traffic, too much blah, blah, too much. Uh -huh. blah, blah. But that when, um, that whole area is reconfigured because they would like to build a new building for the ambulance corps and the fire department, et cetera, that that could certainly be incorporated into it at that time. But I'm also concerned and Chick's not here, so it's another good reason to carry this discussion forward is that I think there are wetlands back there. It's off of Columbia Street. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how far it is from the wetlands. Mm -hmm. So that might not be a great, um, you know, idea either. So, you know, going back, I can show you my funky little picture here, I think. You want to share the screen again with for me? Yes, hold on. I'll, I'll, uh, Don, do you have a GIS map with the wetlands for there? Not up, not up on my screen at the moment, but uh, possibly could get one pretty quickly. So this, if you- You're ready, Marianne, you can share now. Um, okay, I have it up. What do I do? How do I do it? I did it before. There we go, let's see. What was the address? Haven's Beach. No, no, um, no, not Haven's Beach. It's the Columbia Street Firehouse. Oh, okay. Pardon you me. know, to see whether or not down the road that would be a better place. Um, get rid of this. Why is this here? What is this? It's got a, with the room. I don't need the room. Breakout room. This is becoming a very frustrating process. Um, does anybody know how I get rid of these rooms? What are this add room, open room, recreate? I just want that to go away. So hit the arrow at the top there. This this business up there. What arrow? This one up here. Go back. Oh no, up here. Over, over here. What? Over where the the yellow, uh, red and yellow and green. Well, I see are. green. I don't. Uh, let's just stop sharing for a moment. Oh, I can't. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, now I'm going to try sharing again. Okay. So this was the idea that I had. So we're all familiar with Bay Street and you come into Havens Beach and this is about where the little guard station is. And then over here is where the boats are 
And this is where snow has been um, placed before. So the way that we did it in December of 2020, when we had that big snowstorm, I feel does not meet the DEC requirements. Number one, there's supposed to be a silt fence between the, the snow and any surface water. Clearly we don't have that. And I think it's, you know, a question, it's like, you know, it's supposed to be 50 to 100 feet from the, um, from surface water and at high tide where that snow was placed was clearly within um, uh, that designation. So my thought was, and I'll show you the map that's, um, or I'll send it all to you, which the various properties the village owned, is that we come in here and that up here, this be the first snow dump, this be the second, this be the third, you know, if in fact we have, you know, three snowfalls. This is quite a way and it's a very sandy um, soil. And the thing I like about it too is, is that when you're looking at it, there are trees back here. So it's going to sort of be muffled a little bit with the background of um, the trees and straggly bushes, et cetera, et cetera. It's not going to be like this big lump of coal that, you know, that compass is almost, you know, simulating here. Um, but I thought you said you we're not going to do havens. Is this so? This is what you're talking about before. Yeah. Didn't yeah? Didn't you? The mayor's going to walk on havens on ten o'clock and going to decide. You know, show the plan of what the plan that they have for improving Havens Beach at ten o'clock on Saturday. Well, this is west of what they're planning on doing, and I think Marianne's proposal is really worth looking at. Uh, you said the Columbia Street is a is a no go. Is that correct? I was told that it, we, it couldn't be considered because of the traffic issues and stuff around the firehouse. Yeah, if, if I don't know what the wetlands deal is, if John's been able to find that information, but conceptually, this is, this is a pretty, you know, this is a pretty good solution. I think it is. I don't know what the, if, you know, if, if you put a GPS on all the plows, where, you know, where do they do most of their plowing and, and well, route, this, but they've been doing this historically, so. This, this think, no, um, all the snow, all the streets, the, the, the plows are angled so that the snow goes up on all of our front yards, right? Yeah. This is snow that's on Main Street. So Main Street gets plowed so that there's a big pile yeah. in the middle of Main Street yeah. and then they dump truck it away and they take it to Haven Speech. Okay. So this is not requiring any kind of further you know, it's not like somebody said, take it to the golf course. Well, we don't own the golf course, so I don't think we can do that. But that would be definitely a longer trip. Um, so I think that's all right. And, he, you know, pitiful me, I can't, you know, show you these. Um, but here, um, what's so that this, cross right, so on it? Marian? This is the kind of the ground that's, mm -hmm. um, there over at those sites I just showed you. Um, and you can see it would be kind of hidden with the straggly trees. Behind. Oh, that's a CBD <laughs> oil for my dog. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's get rid of that. Um, just more pictures. So of this that. is probably originally dredge over there. Dredge spoils over there. It could be, right? Now, Not very exciting. It's a lot of deer over there. That's all. Yeah, well, the deer could play. Um, so I'm sorry. I, I did have a slideshow and I don't have it. Oh, this. So this was like my little arts and crafts effort. So Sandy, or Rusty rather, from Nelson Pope suggested that we move it to the inside of the circle, just south of the rain garden that's on that side. Mm -hmm. And I tried to approximate you know, by putting my car there for scale as to what an eyesore it would be there. I'm not in love with that idea. That was his idea. I would rather it be over there. People wouldn't be looking at it all the time, which is what the problem, part of the problem is where it is now. Um, and I don't think runoff would be a major problem. It's as, it's, it's as close, it's as close, it's as, it's as, close to the water as on the other side, but there will no, be- No, it's much no, it's further not. away. No, it's not. It's much further away, um, Kate. Okay. Yeah. Because 
when that, um, no, see, then I get into like all my. Well, just the one you showed before, I thought it looked like it might not be because the beach starts pretty soon where the boats are. Starts right. right there. Yeah. So the, where the snow has been, it's right on top of the beach. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. when it went right there in December, when the snowfall, you know, after two or three months, it had consolidated and it was further away, but there were puddles of water. You can see the puddles of water because right. that's ground up concrete underneath that parking lot. It's not porous. Right. So, you know. Marianne, so um, who, um, who would you go to to get uh, the green light on this and who made the decision in the past to dump the snow where it is? Um, I think DPW. So I um, um, met with Jim LaRocca and down there and I told him what I'm telling you. Um, and, um, and then that's all as far as it went. So what I thought I should do is to pass this by the Harbor Committee and have the Harbor Committee sort of agree that this is probably the best of poor options and, um, and then take it to the village board. And um, I, I think it needs that kind of action because I don't think the DPW on their own is going to move on it. Right. Are there, are there wetlands where you're proposing? No, it's Cor Maria. Well, it doesn't look like wetlands, right? Well, I don't know, you know, wetlands are, um, it's, uh, it looks like a safer place, but it would be embarrassing if there were some wetlands there. And well, we you know, you're totally right. So I think that it's good that we'll carry this over. We'll have Chick give us an idea whether or not this is wetlands. Um, and it's village property. It's not Cormaria property, right? It's village property. If yeah. we go back to Great. this picture, um, well, I say that, but um, I think the green here is um, Cora Maria. Mm -hmm. And I think this is Haven's Beach. I think you're right. But, so. Sounds good. Looks good to uh, me. Fred? Okay. Is Fred still with us or is Fred? Yeah, I'm here. Um, Fred, can you um, back uh, this up that in fact, um, well, I think the map even shows this is it's the same pale cream color, right? Yeah. So that would be where those little dots yeah, are. The, the village property, I, I don't, I don't have it right in, uh, you know, in front of me, but it goes a ways over there, so it, it doesn't. So that, that that looks right to me, and I think the pale color shows you what what the village property is. Okay. There. It goes beyond the fence because there's fence there, right? So right, it goes, it goes beyond That's, the fence. I can see that being an objection that they're going to have to remove um, chunks of that fence, but. So what? They move those chunks of the fence. They can put them back, you know, in the in the spring or the fall. Or right? put them on the property line to, to demarcate um, Cormaria from the village. Well, I've I, I, I've got it up on my uh, up on my screen. Just just to the uh, west of the road, it's only, it's a very small amount of property that's still village property before you get to the privately owned property. Well, what are you calling small amount? Uh, actually, I can do a measurement if you want, but uh, come on. I think I can do a measurement. It might take me, I'd say 20 feet. Well, 20 feet's enough. I think we might want to look at that a little closer because that road is, is probably close to 20 feet wide or at least 12 or 15. And if this map is at all accurate, then that would indicate that there's more than 20 feet, more like 50 feet between the road and the property line. Um, where could we best check this, uh, Fred? Um, we probably have some records in town hall. I mean, have village hall that, that you know, shows the property boundary there. Um, you know, tax map, Although the tax map isn't, you know, isn't gospel, it would give you an idea, I think. Okay. Can you see the red lines on that screen? You want to share your screen, John? No, I'm just showing you. All right, so I will stop sharing, and John can share. 
if you pin John's, if you pin John's uh, image, you can get what he's after. Kind of. He's a little bit low here. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, Dora. Okay, so John, I um, you can share your screen. It's, I, it's I made you co-host. Computer, so I can't share it directly. I'm sorry. John, what are those red lines, John? That is the property boundary. So that somebody's property goes all the way to the beach there between Cormaria and the Havens Beach. That's what it's showing in terms of uh, the property now. Huh. That's well, John, can you move this up a little further? Can you move? Yeah. Something's a little screwy because this is, there's the circle, there's the trench, here's the parking lot. That's interesting. Do we think that that's somebody? Well, you know what? This is tax map time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is what's shown on the tax maps. These are the these are the boundaries from the tax maps. From the, the county, from the county records. Right. But you know what? I would still say that if the road is what isn't the road like ten or twelve feet wide. Yeah, the space between oh, the, the road, road and the red line. Yeah, yeah. I think, can yeah. you put it back up there, John? Okay. That I would think that we're probably looking at about 50 feet between the road and yes. what the red line is. Yeah, it's bigger than the road, twice as big yeah. as the road, kind of. It's like four times as big as the road, right? <clears throat> Where are you, John? Yeah, I had that up on a different computer, so that's why I couldn't share. Oh. Okay. All right. Well, good. So, I think, yes. I was just saying, Mary. I think what the request should be in general is is that if if they're going to dump at Havens Beach, that they dump it someplace that's farther away from the water, from the wetlands, which right. is likely to to uh, wash into the you know wash into the into the bay. And, you know, the dog park, um, for months after that snow, the dog park was, um, it, it, it had huge puddles in it. It just did not drain. So that at first was my idea that we just should go into the dog park side of the parking lot. But I abandoned that idea. There's just no drainage there. Um, yeah, that, yeah, I would agree with you. I think that's the wrong place. Right. So this looked like it was very sandy, um, but it looked like it was firm. Um, anyway. Marianne, don't they dump, um, if I recall, the majority of the snow was dumped over to the wet, to the east side, but then in, the, in that circle area where yeah. the scenes, they dumped there also. Yeah, so uh, Doris, can I have the screen back again? Yeah. Uh, so there was, Way down here, maybe where the X was actually, there was a small pile of, of snow there. Uh -huh. It was probably like one tenth, one fifteenth of what yeah. was over here. Yeah, I remember. There was that. a small pile there. And of course that was very close to the um to the water as well. And the DEC says, you know, 50 to 100 feet from surface water and that you need to have a silt fence. So um, I think we've been in violation when we, unfortunately, I mean, fortunately, I guess, we don't have a snowfall that size every year. So we kind of like just go, well, that was the problem and then we don't deal with it. So I think it would be good if we sort of try to hunker down and come up with um, some recommendations and put it in front of the board. Okay. Exactly where, where do the helicopters land? I hear that, but I, I don't see it. Do they land in the dog park? They don't land in the middle. They land in the middle. Uh, I, I don't um, know. In the in the area that's in the area that we call the dog park. Oh, um, that's where they land in the yes. dog park area. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Um, any other comments on this? I, I'll make it my job to look at the tax map and try to get a better um, understanding of how much property there is between the road and um, this neighboring um, private property. Um, and uh, any other comments? Anybody from the public that's uh, 
stayed and listened to this? I guess not. Maria, I have a question. You, you, you mentioned you, you mentioned the the mayor being there on um, on or somebody mentioned the mayor being there on uh, on Saturday and there being a proposal. Has there been a a, a actual proposal made uh, for for modifications there, or is this just part of the campaigning? I don't think it's either, John. I think um, I think it was Aiden's idea. Um, that maybe people should actually walk Haven's Beach because a lot of people have never walked all the way back from you know the dog park area into that um, the back reaches of it and um, you know there the first question you asked no I have not seen any formal proposal and what I keep lobbying for is that we have a master plan um, that. Yay incorporates, you know, everything from Little Northwest Creek over to Cora Maria and, and everything north from 114. Um, I know that um, Aiden has um, um, collected some of the um, plans, previous plans for a reconstructed wetland, but there's no plan. Nobody's applied for a grant. I'm hoping that we're applying for a grant now for this, um, the watershed. I'm hoping it's a fifty thousand dollar item. Um, so, John, um, you're closer to Melissa Winslow than I am. I have requested from her numerous times the engineering study that apparently has been done for the proposed IA at the bathroom, and um, she said it's there, but she seems reluctant to reveal that information uh, to yours truly. I think Marianne's absolutely right. We need to work on a master plan at some point, but one of the things we need to know is where's the water table. And uh, I am gonna go on record to be very strong against anything until we have that information. Well, Will, all you have to do is go over to East Hampton and foil that engineering report. I guess I will do that. You know, I mean, I, Melissa has it in her hands. She just doesn't so, see it. You know, and sometimes I know that this is true in Sag Harbor. You just can't walk in and ask for something. No, I'll foil it. I've been emailing her um, for months, but I'll, I'll do it that way. That's... Yeah, I think that's what you have to do. Well, I, I, th I, I thought, and I could be wrong on this, but I thought the last time that, 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 that I asked about it was they were doing it. They were working on it and not finished it. But that I could be, they could have finished it since, since then. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I think the master plan at some point, um, I'm all on that one because there's, there's a lot of discussion. Um, Did you guys get funding for that rain garden project over there near Harding Place? Not yet. So, yeah, I mean, I think we, you know, sort of higgly piggly have these different rain gardens that are all yeah. quite valid, but I just feel like we need like a plan. Yeah. You know, what's going on here? I am. Well, well I believe that was approved. Was that approved uh, at the last uh, town board meeting? Not that I know of. Uh, maybe it was. I haven't heard about it. Maybe I didn't hear about that either, but um, mm. um, I, I am happy to report that um, we kind of got like a bunch of the mines. Maybe you remember, maybe you don't, but Edwina Van Gaal is our Harbor Committee consultant. So we kind of got her together with Rusty and the mayor and Chick and Dee Yardley to go down there and look at the um, those rain gardens there, which were really rather pitiful. And expensive. And there's now supplemental plantings in there, and there is a drip line. So they look much better. Oh, I could actually show you that picture, but um, I went down there and I'll email it to all of you. Um, they look really good. Good. Well, that's, yeah. that's encouraging. And, you know, it's also, it's like nice to be able to point to them because we have funding for homeowners to put those on their property. And, you know, the way they look before, nobody myself included, would have wanted that on my property. And that was 48,000, as I recall. Pardon me? That was $48,000. These two over here? I believe so. I don't think it was quite that much, but whatever. It was, I, I remember it being like 34. Maybe it didn't, that didn't cover all the costs or something. But it was a Peconic Estuary <clears throat> Partnership and EPA. What did Edwina think about them? 
Well, she and I went there last summer and she was a little aghast and, um, but in a very nice way, in a very polite way. So it just took us a while to get every, all the minds together. And um, anyway, it's, and very soon thereafter, there were more plants put in, like a lot more plants. Uh -huh. And there was a drip line put in because before either the plants were the wrong plants because they got heavily browsed um, or others just died because they didn't have enough water. So, and I asked, I wasn't there. I was traveling at the time. I sort of set up the meeting and then said, okay. Um, and she said she didn't really feel that she had so much to you know, claim responsibility for changes. It was just that it gave an opportunity for everybody to get there at one time and look at it and say, we have to change this. So it's been changed and it's good. Okay. Um, any other Just, comments or should we move on to dinner? I, I, have, I have a question for, for Fred actually, if Fred's still there. I'm still here. Fred, this is a question in regards to the codes. There was there were emails back and forth with members of the of the Harbor Committee, um, and I'm not sure whether you were copied in or not um, in the, in the last week um, about about a property uh, where there was a cement wall built on the beach. And I, I don't I don't want to get into the details of the of the property, but the the question that came up was apparently the cement wall. Was was built prior to the wetlands law going into into effect, um, and there was a question as to whether there were repairs to this. So the question would come up as to whether as to whether repairs, whether it was an erosion <laughs> control, control control structure, and whether repairs would require a permit, and to what degree repairs. In, in any case, uh, one of the things that I looked up was section 107 of the village code, which is bulkheading, dredging, and canals. And it, it has no definition as to what bulkheading is. In fact, it has very few definitions, but it still requires a permit from the village board uh, for bulkheading um, along a shoreline, um, uh, any natural body of water, you know, et cetera. And these, these would be activities that would also, under the wetlands law, require a, a permit from the, from the Harbor Committee. And it's, it's unclear to me as to whether the village board is still issuing permits under that section or whether that was assumed that it was taken over by the, uh, by the Harbor Committee under the wetlands law. Um, so that's one part of the, of the of the question is the relation of, of that section 107 to the to the, to the wetlands law. The the other is is that there is a, a section I believe of the executive law and I think it's 922 but I could be wrong that extends the jurisdiction of the village out to 1500 feet um, uh, for villages that have a uh, uh, an LWRP. Um, and a plan under that. And, and we have never incorporated that extension of jurisdiction uh, into the local law, either the wetlands law or this, this bulkheading law. And the question is whether that needs to, needs to be done. So, so those are my two or three legal questions. Okay, I'm not sure I'm gonna have the answers for you right away, but I'm, I pulled up section 107, which was adopted 50 years ago. Wow. Um, and I will take a look at this. I don't recall, at least in my years as the village attorney, about there ever being any permits issued under this section. But it or appears to be that the law is still in effect. Well, it's still on the books. I don't see it ever being repealed. There was a modification made in 1979. Um, All right, so this was installed sometime in the 90s, if one would think. I don't know. John's got GIS images. Yeah. I, I, let me take a look, John. I, I, I see the section you're looking at. 
Uh, I, I, I don't know a lot about the history of, of this. All I can tell you is I don't recall um, ever <laughs> a permit being issued under that section by the, by the Board of Trustees, but I'll, I'll take a look at it. And then your, your second question with regard to the extended jurisdiction that we did by special act, whether or not, what, un, w w just rephrase that question for me. Yeah, there's, a, there's a, again, it's a section, I, I, say, I, I, say, I believe it's section 922. I can look it up and send it to you of the executive. Well, executive law, it's probably what the uh, coastal zone management section. In the, yeah, in and the it regards right? to the LWRP and it allows, it, it, it incorporates the, the extension of jurisdiction out to, out to 1,500 feet. Right, which is also uh, in the navigation law. Yeah, and, and this, this would allow the extension of the jurisdiction for bulkheads, docks, et cetera, out to 1,500 feet. Right. Um, and again, I'll, Mike, I'll find that. I'll take a look at it. If you have a site for it, send it along. But okay. I should be, I, I know what you're talking about. I should be able to find it pretty easy. And I'll take a look and I'll get back to you. Okay. But it's a, it came up in regards to this, this question. And I can send you a picture of this, of this as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Send it along. I'll take a look. Where there was a question as to, as to, as to the cement, the, uh, a uh, wall on the beach uh, as to whether it was permitted, not permitted, required a permit, predated the permit requirements. Yeah. Okay. I know that there was um, a deck that people had put um, very close to where the um, the little sailboats come in and out from Haven's Beach, like maybe five years ago, and um, they had to take it down. They used to put lawn chairs on it and sit out there and sun themselves and um, so that that deck had to disappear. You must remember that, John. Oh yeah, sure, sure. No, John, isn't the uh, wasn't wasn't the building department going to send an inspector down there to investigate and then look at the uh, records? Yeah, I think well, so. Uh, I, I'm I'm asking more theoretically as to as to the law, though, rather than you getting into the particular issue of whether that particular property is in is in, is in violation. But yes, right. they they were going to look at it, but. Uh, as I said, that it partly related to the fact that if that is a bulkhead, and I don't know what the definition of bulkhead is because it doesn't seem to be in the statute, um, that if if that structure was a bulkhead, then they would have had to have gotten a permit uh, under under Section uh, 107, which was in effect prior to for that structure being being built. Uh, right. uh, I mean, the, the, the photos from the GIS show that the structure was there prior to the, to the wetlands law being being put into effect. So. All what right. year is that? John? What year are you talking about, John? What year did the wetlands law go into effect? Yeah. I don't remember off the top of my head, but. Like 10 or 12 years ago, right? Yeah, I believe the, the, this, the structure was there prior to 2010. Yeah, okay. All right, guys. Anything else? Are we going to let Herb go to dinner? Yes, please. He's already there. Look at his <laughs> picture. He's just gone. Yes. yes, he's left we, us. We'll but his hands adjourn. still up. Pardon me? I think we're ready to adjourn. May I have a motion to adjourn? Motion, motion. to adjourn. A uh, second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you Bye, for everybody. your hard work. Bye. Thank, thank you, you, everybody. Bye. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Will. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.